Of the Boring Man, Chapter 4, of The City. Theodore had been silent since the morning. He remembered how a few hours ago when Amana opened the door, he was already awake for a few minutes and her sight had been a blessing. Not just because he was starting to appreciate her alien beauty and the flawless style of her entire race, but because of some more primal needs, like going to the bathroom. His new alien acquaintances had given him rest and nourishment, but had somehow forgotten that what goes in must come out. His frantic movements clued Amana in on his immediate needs and privacy was given in the appropriate facility. That's when the voice returned. I would advise you to remain silent, as during your sleep the translation matrix had been completed for bi-directional communication. Your brain now has direct access to it. What that basically means is that should you talk from now on, the words coming out of your mouth will be in Sanya. Why not communicate with them? asked Theodore in lowered voice. I have analyzed the wireless signals of this world and have come to the conclusion that it is best to hide your identity. Our damaged arrival may not have been an accident. There are various conflicting streams of information and in my current state, I am overwhelmed translating, processing and filtering all the inputs. The voice took a short break and Theodore felt a short jolt in his brain just as he was thinking about Amana and what her opinion would be, should he reveal the truth about him understanding her. Then, thinking about her beauty, he remembered just how frail she was compared to his human biology. However, before he could continue his chain of thought, the voice interjected, I have activated one of your implants. It was, I believe, designed to help in situations just like this. It was implemented before I repaired your body. I believe it will help you with these unhealthy thoughts. What exactly was the voice considering unhealthy? He could not remember a time when his thoughts were just his own, but still he felt some need for privacy. I understand your need for privacy, the voice replied clearly having monitored his every thought. Theodore, while thankful not to be alone in his predicament, felt a level of unease not having agency over what was shared with the voice. Much to his surprise, however, the voice continued. Privacy mode enabled. If you would like me to access your mind at some point, all you have to do is blink three times in quick succession. Do the same to reactivate privacy mode at any time. If you also keep your eyes closed for a few moments after blinking, full privacy mode will be initiated and I will be fully oblivious to both your thoughts and your senses. Theodore was at ease. Things were slowly coming into order and his apprehension towards his current situation was slowly fading away. He blinked his eyes to deactivate privacy mode now thinking about what the voice said earlier, just as he was returning to the main room of the house. It immediately replied, I believe our arrival did not remain unnoticed until we know more about this culture, not as they present themselves in the media, but rather how they act towards strangers. It would be prudent to reveal as little as possible. It made perfect sense, and Theodore couldn't help but agree with the voice. There was no breakfast served, something that mildly irritated Theodore, causing his implant to give him another jolt. What was this thing for exactly? Before he could receive an answer, another thought crossed his mind. How would other people react to him? He was, after all, quite different from the inhabitants of Sanya. Before he could give it more thought, Amana entered the room, holding a large cape in her hands and offering it to him. Here, put this on. I'd rather not answer too many questions that I don't have answers to. It won't take long, and you'll meet Carl. He is by far the best exolinguist in Sanaya, but he might be a little crazy, don't worry. We'll understand each other in no time. Her positive demeanor was genuine. Her hair had changed to a much lighter color compared to how it was in the forest. Interesting. Could it be? It seemed like her people changed colors to some extent, depending on their surroundings. However, she was just as beautiful as before in her alien way. They then went outside and embarked on a hover vehicle that immediately zoomed towards the main road. The gold-black vehicle, 
shaped like a cylindrical pod with a transparent roof that was mounted on top of a circular hover platform, was in contrast against the green and purple plant life. The landscape was surreal. Soon they could see the city of Sinai in the distance. Its elegance and perfect harmony with its surroundings was a clear sign that it was built by an advanced civilization. Hovering buildings suspended in the air and spaceships coming and leaving could be glimpsed from far away. In terms of grandiose design, this far surpassed the utopian scene that the voice had shown him of Earth. They soon arrived in the city. There, in a fancy manner, Carl was waiting at the window, eager to meet his new project. Yes, 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 come in, please. As the door opened, an older man greeted them with a stern look on his face, in stark contrast to his voice, reminiscent of a mad scientist. He looked at Theodore thoroughly, then continued. What do we have here? I don't suppose you stumbled upon a Huma. I mean a super soldier. Ha ha, just kidding. I was looking at his armor and since I've been watching the Codron show this morning, stupid jokes are just my way of coping with bad news, terrible news. Upon hearing Carl's words, Theodore froze for a moment, his pulse punching against his suit. His mind felt like it was falling into a void filled with uncertainty. Before he could react, Amana interjected. What bad news? We had a rather busy few days and haven't been watching the news. You better see yourself. Communication with unknown aliens, even for the well-versed, is not something you can rush. It will probably take the better half of the day just to build a word chart for very basic communication. I have a recording of Codron's morning speech. I always record his shows to watch them in the evening again. He has a way, you know, with words. Even when he gives you bad news, he takes you on a journey. And by the time you get the bad news, you're disconnected and relaxed and you can take it better. Just as Carl was pushing the tape in the device, he scoffed. Still, I think it's absolute nonsense, this whole story about humans. 